Hello everybody and welcome to the Thursday edition of Video Clips and I have a couple things I want to cover today. First of all, just a quick announcement next week, July 23rd, Chef Dell, Conversations with Chef Dell, the most talented low-fat vegan chef in the country. He's going to talk about summer soups. Um, we, may, we have some great summer soups here. He makes some great gazpachos and uh, that sort of thing. So um, make sure you tune in for that call. You can get information by calling the office. All right, um, I'm going to start this first article by uh, giving you a quote from somebody who is amazing, Dr. Neil Barnard at the Physicians Committee of Responsible Medicine. He says, as it turns out, taste buds require training and maintenance. And um, that's an important thing when we talk about changing diets. The good news is that lots of people are talking about the declining health of our kids, the increasing incidence of disease, their weight problems, etc. There's almost universal agreement right now that we just can't ignore this issue. It's not going to go away. The bad news is that there is no shortage of myths concerning children and their eating habits and preferences. I'm appalled at some of the statements. I think they borderline, they're borderline hopeless. You know, kids just want to eat junk and they won't eat good foods, they'll always find a way to get junk and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. I really think parents and health and authorities, teachers, you know, the people that kids should be able to trust in their life to do the right things for them. I think that they need to get control of many issues concerning kids, including the food. Now, I've said for many, many years that anybody can learn to like and even prefer a plant-based diet uh, by just getting rid of the bad foods, eating the good foods, and waiting for their taste to change. The process is called narrow adaptation. It takes 90 to 120 days, and it works well in kids, and it works well in adults. And um, these taste preferences, you know, just documentation that taste preferences are built into cultures and, and that sort of thing, New studies showed this, uh, that um, kids actually aren't born with a taste for bad food, it's cultivated. So the study included 1,705 children who were between the ages of six and nine in a variety of Scandinavian and European countries. And what was evaluated was their preference for sugar in fruit juices and their preference for fat, salt, and MSG in crackers. Now the researchers concluded that age had a lot to do with it. Older kids tend to like sugar and salt with a 34% increase in the propensity to prefer salt, 29% increase in the propensity to like sugar for each additional year of age. And part of that is the more of this stuff they eat, the more of it they want. 70% of the German children like crackers with added fat, while only 35% of the kids in Cyprus liked, 35, liked the added fat crackers. German kids, on the other hand, preferred plain apple juice, while the kids in Sweden, Italy, and Hungary liked the sweetened apple juice better. So the take home point from this is that kids don't just naturally love unhealthy foods. They don't come out of the womb this way. Many American and westernized kids have been taught to like fast food, processed food, salt, fat, you know, sugar, etc. But they can talk to like other foods too. And it's real simple to do it. We just stop providing the bad stuff and start providing only good stuff and wait for nature to take its course. And of course, I've talked about this many times. The refusal to do it, um, I think, I agree with Dr. McDougall, it just borders on child abuse when it comes right down to it. So the other thing I wanted to talk about today is um, an issue about which I'm getting questions at all the lectures I do, and it has to do with Alzheimer's and other forms of cognitive decline. Now, Alzheimer's has sort of become the catch-all term we use to describe anybody who has failing memory or some loss of mental function. And uh, studies are increasingly showing that this is a preventable condition and that brain function is related to both diet and the health of the cardiovascular system. And of course, the health of the cardiovascular system is based on your diet too. So if you take a look at the United States right now, we are currently taking care of millions of people who have Alzheimer's or some version of cognitive decline. And not only is life kind of miserable for them, but for their caregivers as well. So some good news here, you don't have to become one of these people. According to a recent study, one thing that impacts the, brain fun the brain's function is hypertension. And this damage takes place early in life, as early as middle age. The researchers found that both hypertensive and prehypertensive individuals had damage to the white matter of the brain and they had reduced volume of gray matter. Um, the people in the study were all cognitively normal, which suggests that um, this issue of cognitive decline progresses for many, many years before symptoms become apparent. And that's the way degenerative conditions are, by the way. I mean, if you're diagnosed with a, with a tumor today, that tumor didn't start growing 
growing last Monday. It started 10, 20 years ago, and it just became noticeable. It reached a critical mass and became noticeable, and that's what happens with cognitive decline. Now, this particular study involved looking at 579 participants in the Framingham study who were 39 years old at the time that they were enrolled. They were divided into three groups, people with normal blood pressure, prehypertensives, and people with hypertension. MRI was used to determine brain health by looking at injury to the white matter and the volume of gray matter. And the images showed that particip participants with hypertension had less healthy brains than those with normal blood pressure, and that hypertension aged the brain by an average of seven additional years of aging. The researchers didn't um, describe the mechanism of action, but they reported that high blood pressure causes arteries to stiffen, which can affect blood flow to the brain, therefore making it difficult to nourish brain tissue. Now to this, I would add that the dietary habits that cause hypertension also cause narrowing of the arteries due to two mechanisms, arterial constriction because of the reduction in nitric oxide production and also narrowed arteries due to plaque deposition. So the take home point is the best way to slow the progression of dementia and so you can help people who have already started through this process or and cognitive decline or to prevent it is to eat a wellness form style diet which can both protect and repair the arteries and ensure good blood flow to the brain. That's why the people who eat a plant-based diet always appear to be so smart. It's because their brains are being well nourished by all the great stuff that can flow to the brain through those beautiful open elastic arteries. So. That's all for now. Have a great rest of the week and weekend, and I will be back to you next week.